will cease to be. When Congress takes away our freedoms, they will be gone forever. What will you do to prevent this from happening? Now to the economy. Unemployment is up to 10.2%. It's the highest level since 1983. And today the president signed into law a measure extending unemployment benefits, extending a first home buyer tax credit, and adding tax breaks for companies that are losing money. Will this bring the economy back to life? Or are they digging us deeper and deeper in the hole? With me now, John Stossel, Fox Business Anchor, and my colleague here, and Peter Schiff, President of Euro Pacific Capital and author of the new book, Crash Proof 2.0. John, first to you. What did the government do today? What did the president sign into law? What money are they giving away now, notwithstanding unemployment? More, more promises. We're going to, we're the magic politicians. We will ease all pain. And we can do that just by spending more money. And if we don't, we'll sink further into the hole. It's a lot like taking an alcoholic with a hangover and giving him more booze. Except the alcoholic pays for his own booze. He doesn't hit the taxpayer for it. Does it make any sense when unemployment is 10.2% to pay people not to work? Not at all. In fact, it's actually more than 10.2. If you take a look at the people who are working part-time while they're looking for full-time jobs and the people who have stopped looking because they're discouraged, it's 17 and a half. And, you know, the government thinks that we're going to get out of this recession through spending money, through government printing money. We can't. The consumer might have led us into this recession, but he's not going to lead us out. We're broke. The only way out of the recession is by savings, capital investment, and production. And everything the government is doing is interfering with that. And so all this stimulus, it's exactly what John says, they're giving alcohol to a drunk. We're just going to get more intoxicated, and we're going to lose more jobs. Speaking of giving alcohol to a drunk, does the government come up with some new program where by you give the deed to your house to the government, the government owns it, and you rent it from the government? You bet. Did I read Fanny, that right? You did. Fanny and Freddie are going to be in the rental business. They don't want to foreclose on so many people and dump the housing on the market, as they should, to try to shrink these monsters. So they're going to rent. And what kind of record does government have in running public housing? We already have more than 3,000 public housing agencies in the United States. 3,000? 3, 3,000. So now we have these two giant new ones. And the track record of government. Think of FEMA and the trailers mm. after the hurricanes. They put people in trailers. The right. tra you could buy a trailer for $30,000. Surely FEMA's those trailers are gone. No, people are still living in the trailers. And un under this new uh, deal on renting the renting the housing they say they'll be month they'll be one up to a year but they'll be month to month extension so when will they ever get these people out but the, just never get the about point it. about the trailers thirty thousand bucks seventy thousand fema spent and in one case more than two hundred thousand yeah. wow so the government spends tw twice what it's worth promises they'll be there for a few months and they're still there Look, what does the government know about owning housing i can remember driving by public housing in newark yeah. and the next day the government that owned it blew it up well, nothing they didn't know anything about writing mortgages that's why freddie and fanny went bankrupt look what the government should do i think it's a great thing for people who are in over their heads to become renters instead of homeowners. But I'd like them renting from private landlords. So why doesn't the government just sell these properties at auction to somebody who will buy them and rent them back? That way it'd be fair. The government wouldn't be in the landlord business. And now we're going to have this huge bloated inventory. The government thinks if they just hold these properties long enough, the market's going to appreciate. No, it won't. Well, it's going to keep going down until they blow out of the inventory. Meanwhile, when the government is the landlord, they're going to inherit all the maintenance. I bet a lot of these properties haven't been kept up. Right. The homeowners are underwater. All of a sudden, the government's going to be fixing the roofs, fixing the toilets, the garbage disposals, the washer wait, dryer. Wait, wait a minute. The How much is that going to cost? You can't run Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, the post office, or Amtrak. It can fix broken toilets and manage private homes? <laughs> and look at the track record. Here's a quote from Barney Frank. This is just six years ago. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are not facing any kind of financial crisis. The more people exaggerate these problems, the more pressure on the companies, the less we'll see in terms of affordable housing. This is the Barney Frank, who's the chairman of the House Financial Services Committee, saying Fannie and Freddie are in good shape. Six years ago, one year later. <laughs> that's a we have a pact. The federal, this is Franklin Raines. Right. Who was the head of Fannie Fan Fan Mae. This is a pact that the government has with investors. It does not cost taxpayers anything 
Now we're in for a hundred billion. Yeah. Just promised say, a four hundred billion more. Didn't Fannie and Freddie go under? Don't okay. notwithstanding what Rain said of and course. what Frank boasted about, we own them now. I know they went. And now, now they're making even bigger mistakes. Now that they're outright owned by the government, as opposed to just entities where they have a government guarantee. But you know, I was predicting these companies would go bankrupt years ago because I saw the problems that you're talking about. Politicians. What about Chris Dodd, who was supporting Freddie and Fannie? You know, I'm running against Chris Dodd in Connecticut. In, in Connecticut, you know, I'm a candidate for the United States. Senate. I don't know if you know this, in my home state of Connecticut. He's looking at you I like he wants, <laughs> wants you to run, John. And, I, it'd be I great. just met another guy today who said he was running against Oh, well, there's Chris a few Dodd. of us running. In, but hopefully I can, I can take on Chris, Chris Dodd because we've got to get politicians out of the housing market, out of the mortgage market, out of the rental market, out of it completely because they have destroyed it. How about out the of the everything market? Right. How can the president say the stimulus is working with unemployment higher than it's been in, in a generation and a half? Because without our stimulus, it would have been much worse. They can always say that. created all these <laughs> jobs. By borrowing and spending, we will solve a problem caused by borrowing and spending. And, and the way they count, I have one story here. Uh, one woman said she sold nine pair of shoes to the Corps of Engineers for $900, and the Corps used stimulus money to buy the shoes. So she filled out the form. How many jobs did this create? Oh, I must have created nine jobs. I sold nine, nine. pair of work boots. Yeah. you got to remember, Judge, the stimulus, the government uses these words because they sound good. We are in trouble today because of government stimulus. It was the Bush and Greenspan stimulus of cheap money and government intervention and, and, and budget deficits that created the problem. Right. Is, and the more we stimulate, the worse the economy is going to get. Is productivity up? No, I think these are government these are government lies. I don't think we're are we producing of course, the more we have the productivity is up this week. I, I assume these statistics are reasonably correct and, and isn't that a good thing? What I think is remarkable is the Associated Press ran a headline that said as long as companies can get their workers to produce more, they have little reason to hire. The headline said productivity improvement will hurt hiring. And what nonsense this is. It's like the, there's a story in the Cato Journal about the guy who went to China and saw them building a dam with shovels. And he said, why are you using shovels? One machine could do this much faster. And the communist bureaucrat said, oh, but look what that would do to unemployment. Right. Yeah. So you why not give them teeth gas instead of shovels? That shovels. That we you know, as a worker, I want capital. I want to be productive. I can get paid a lot more if I operate a bulldozer than if I'm digging with a shovel. Peter, Peter Schiff, John Stossel, thanks very much. Thousands hit Capitol Hill to protest government-run health care. My next guest was there, and he says he's come up with a better plan. Could it work?